Welcome back to Math and Engineering Help Desk. Uh, we're here with part two of the Algebra 1 uh, final exam review, starting off with Unit 3 on functions. Uh, this actually was supposed to be part of the part one video, and I kind of forgot to go to that. That's okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and start off this uh, particular review with the third unit function. So let's start with uh, this particular page, which we're just determining whether or not something is a function or is not a function. So with number uh, 19 here, we have uh, five points, ordered pairs. And we actually can see that one of these ordered pairs, 4, negative 2, and 4, comma 6, they have the same domain value, 4, that is assigned to two different output values. Because of this, this is not a function, OK? So no, not a function, OK? And the reason why is because 4 is mapped to two different outputs. Outputs. And that is our, uh, that is our reason for that. The domain and range, if we wanted to state the domain and range for this function, we could. It's uh, as far as what the values of x are. In this case, it's 4, negative 7, 1, and negative 5. And I actually put those in curly braces. Uh, that is our domain. Okay, And then for our range, our range is negative 2, 8, 3, and 6. And I should. Uh, Sort that as well. Negative 2, 8, 3, and 6. So 3, 6, 8. And then if I want to be uh, adamant about sorting things, I can sort this as well. Negative 7, negative 5, 1, 4. OK. So that would be our domain and range for this particular uh, non function. OK. For number 20, same deal. We look at this, we see that all of the x values are actually unique, negative 5, 3, 1, and 0. So it doesn't matter what they're mapped to. It just matters that there's no repeated uh, domain value. So in this case, yes, it is a function. So uh, for the domain here, again, same deal. The domain of this function is going to be negative 5, 0, 1, 3. And the range is negative 8, negative 1, 6, and 14. Okay, so. That takes care of number 20. Now for number 21. Here we have a mapping diagram. We have the inputs here, and we have the outputs here. Remember, f of x is uh, our set of outputs. So uh, again, all unique values here. They're each mapped to one value in the range. So this is a function. Okay. If any of these output input values had more than one arrow coming from them, pointing to two different values, it would not be a function. So this is a function. And because it's a function, we can, uh, we can say why. We can explain. Uh, in this case, all unique. And the same, the same explanation for number 20. All inputs are assigned to exactly one output, Okay, even if those outputs are the same. So in number uh, 21, even though uh, numbers 5 and negative 10 are both mapped to 8, that is still OK. You can have multiple input values mapped to a single output. Uh, so the explanation for number 21 would be exactly the same as number 20. The domain here is going to be uh, negative 25, negative 10, 5, and 9. And the range is going to be um, negative 27, 0, and 8. Okay, And that is our domain and range. For number 22, we have a graph. Now this particular graph is not a function. And the reason it's not a function is because if you see here, we can draw a vertical line. It's called the vertical line test. It'll intersect more than one point on this curve. Therefore, it is not a function because it intersects more than one point. Okay, So vertical line test indicates parts that would intersect more than one point on a vertical line. Okay, Kind of explaining the vertical line test. So in this case, the domain and range, if you had to state what the domain and range is, Based on this, it looks like the x. Uh, it looks like there's infinite domain, infinite as far as all real numbers you can plug in and not plug in. There's no way to tell right now, based on the way this graph is, whether or not it would extend into the negative y. So I would venture to say that the range is all positive values, uh, or all num numbers greater than zero. So if you wanted to say all real numbers and the range, um, all values greater than or equal, we'll say greater than zero. Okay. Uh, although for that, for this particular question, I would argue this would probably not be something you would be asked of, to do for this graph. But if for some reason these arrows were pointing downward or upward and right and downward and left, whatever, you could say the range is all numbers as well. Okay, next, 
we have the we have the following functions, and we just have to basically plug in numbers. This is not this is not too bad. If we're finding f of three, we're just plugging in three for x and determining what they what we get for that. So f of three equals three times three minus seven. Well, three times three is nine. Minus seven is two. So f of three equals two. For g of negative five, we're doing negative six times negative five plus 14. That's going to be positive 30 plus 14, which is equal to 44. So f or g, excuse me, g of negative 5 equals 44. For h of 6 here, we just have to plug in 6 for x. So h of 6 would equal um, 6 divided by 2 plus 7. So that's 3 plus 7, which is just 10. So h of 6 equals 10. All right, so plugging in values. If you're asked to find a h of a value or a function of a value, just plugging in that number for x and determining what you get. That's all. Not too bad. OK, for this problem here, we have a graph. Now, uh, this question here, is this, this sort of set of questions, is really going to uh, make sure you understand your function terminology. So let's take a look at all these questions. First question we're asked is, what is the domain of the function? Well, what values are we allowed to plug in? So in this case, we can plug in 0. We technically can plug in any values, even though we have discrete values. We have a connectedness to those points. So therefore, we can argue that we are, and we're not arguing, we can say that um, all of the values between 0 and 6 inclusive is our domain. So we can express that a couple of different ways. I like to express that using a compound inequality. So 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 6 is the best way to explain that. You also could write that out in words, of course. Um, the range of the function. What are the maximum minimum values that we can use that we get for outputs? Well, according to this, 0 is one of the values. So is 40 and everything in between. So the same here, the range. We'll use y for our uh, outputs. So our range is going to be 0 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 40. Okay, So all those values would be included. For f of 3, we're just determining what the value of the graph is at 3. So if I start here at 3, I can see that that's 20. So f of 3 equals 20. 5.5, same deal. This time I'm going to go in between 5 and 6. If I go to 5.5, that's also 20. So the value of f of 5.5 is equal to 20. The value of x does, what value of x does f of x equal 20? So here we're going to determine what output value, uh, what input value, excuse me, would yield this output value. So if I look on my graph, Here's 20, and I can see that 3 would, would uh, provide that, and so would 5.5. So in this case, number 30 is kind of, in my opinion, kind of a trick question. Or you can say there's more than one answer. Okay, So you can say 3 or 5.5. You could also say both. I would say say both. For what value of f of x does f of x equals 40? Well, that's going to be 5. I look at the graph and see here's 40, and then 5 is the output value. So in this case, the answer is 5. Okay. All right, so that concludes unit three. Let's talk about unit four now, linear functions. OK, so this is a little bit different than what we had from the uh, previous video. This time, we have to graph these functions. So we'll go over a couple of different graphing techniques that we can use to graph these functions. For standard form, slope intercept form, excuse me, y equals negative 3x plus 5. The strategy that works best here is to start with the y-intercept. So if I start at the y-intercept and want this graph at negative so 3 is my slope, 5 is my y-intercept. So I'll start at 5, I'll put a point at that, I'll use the uh, exaggerated point right there, boom. Okay, So that's going to be our y-intercept. So we'll start our graph there. And then according to the slope, negative 3 is our slope, which means we're going to be going down 3 units and right 1 unit. So if I start here and I go down 3 units and write 1 unit, white right 1 unit, <laughs> then I'm going to put that uh, point there. And then if I continue, I can put more points in the same spot. And then I can just draw a line connecting those points. So I'll do that right now. Uh, let's, go with, uh, let's go with purple. What the heck? Okay, so we'll start here, and let's try to graph this accurately as we can. Be right about here, and there's our graph. So we just have to connect our points once we're done. We just have to connect all the points that we put on there. I recommend putting three to four points on your graph to give yourself a nice uh, spot. But also notice that the line should extend beyond the graph itself to indicate that it does continue in all directions. Uh, OK, so number 33, same deal here. Let's go ahead and plot the y-intercept first. In this case, it's negative 1. So we'll put the point at negative 1. Boom, there it is. And then 3 fourths means we're going to go up 3 units, but right 4 units to get to our next point. So 1, 2, 3 up, and 1, 2, 3, 4 right is going to put us right there. If I do the same thing here, up 3 and right 4, notice that with a positive slope, the line would go up from left to right. That's another way to kind of remind yourself of where you should be going when you're drawing the line uh, from here. OK, a little bit off on that. Let's 
try again. There we go. That's better. So there's our graph for this particular line. Okay, pretty close. Okay, so slope intercept form, that's the strategy I recommend. Now, if you have something like this, this is called point slope form, when you have y minus a number equals 2 times x plus a number. This time, they're basically giving you a point that's on the line without telling you that, that you have a point that's on the line. Uh, remember, the point slope form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So in this case, the uh, coordinates of the points would kind of be the opposite of the signs that are in here. Uh, and that's actually how we would plot that first point. So in this case, the first point would have negative 1 as the x-coordinate and positive 3 as the y-coordinate. So there is where that slope would be. And then the, uh, sorry, that where's the point would be, excuse me. And then the slope is 2. That's the coefficient of this x term here. So we're going to go up 1 over 2 and up 1 over 2. Okay, so that would be our, uh, those would be the points that we can use for this particular line. Let's draw that through. And let's extend that, and that should be good. Okay. Now, I just want to prove to you that that, that works. If you, you also could rewrite this particular function as a uh, slope-intercept form, if you distributed, you'd have 2x plus 2, and then you'd have to s add 3 to both sides. That would give you y equals 2x plus 5. See how the y-intercept is 5 here, and the slope is still 2. So that point-slope form works uh, just fine. Okay, for number 35, this time we have standard form. Standard form, it's easiest to graph if you just use the y and x intercepts as your points. So when we want to use the x and y intercepts, we just think of it as we're going to cover up, um, we're going to cover up a, uh, uh, a, 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 a term because when the, uh, we have the x-intercept, the y equals 0. When we have the y-intercept, the x is 0. So if we just think of it as let's ignore the y, right, we'll just kind of cross that off right now, and then negative 4x equals 16, well, that means x equals negative 4, OK? So the x-intercept on this graph is negative 4. So I'll put a point on negative 4 on the x-axis. And then if I do the same thing, if I just ignore the negative 4x over here and say 2y equals 16, well, y would equal 8. So the y-intercept of this function is 8. So therefore, those two points would graph like this. So here's our graph for this line, right? Something like that. Okay, So using the intercepts in this case is recommended when you have it written in standard form. Now for 36 and 37, these are easy if you uh, understand the rule. Let me just kind of move my line out of the way because I'm covering up the previous problem here. Uh, let's see if I can just drag this up. Can I? Can I? No, you're not going to let me do it? All right, fine. Okay. Yeah, it's not going to let me do it. That's okay. We'll fix that. All right, x equals 9. That's the one we're looking for. I just want to redo that, put that line back on. OK, so anyway, y equals negative 6. That's a horizontal line. If it's y equals a constant, it's a horizontal line through that part of the y-axis. And that's kind of what you can use to remember whether you're going horizontal or vertical. Um, y equals negative 6 means that it's want, you want all the y points that have a y-coordinate of negative 6, which basically is a horizontal line through here, because all of the y-coordinates of this line would be negative 6. So there is our line for that. Similarly, when we have x equals 9, which is what 37 is, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to the x-axis. We're going to plot 9. And this is going to be the set of all points that have an x-coordinate of 9. And that would be the graph for that. Okay, So horizontal line for y, vertical line for x. All right, next question. Uh, what is the x-intercept? What is the y-intercept? Slope of the line, and what's the equation? So here we have a graph. Okay. Now, the x-intercept, according to this, looks like it's about 3 and a half, okay? Because it's in between 3 and 4. We'll say 3.5 is our good best estimate for that. The y-intercept, in this case, is where it's crossing the y-axis. That's crossing the y-axis at negative 6. And what's the slope of this line? Now, there's a couple ways I can go about the slope. Here, actually, what is the strategy that I could do is I could do the opposite of the y-intercept divided by the x-intercept. That's one strategy that you can use, because we have two points here. So if I did the change in y over the change in x to get from here to here, I actually could get the slope for that particular line. Uh, another strategy I could employ is just marking off two points on the line that are clearly on intervals that are noted by the graph. So I noticed that there's one right there as well. I can do the difference in the y over the difference in x here. In this case, the difference in y is 5, and the difference in x is 3. So the slope of this line is 5 over 3. Okay. So we say that that's the slope. As again, we also could have gotten the same thing if we did the opposite of 6 and divided it by 3.5. That should also yield 5 over 3 as well as the slope there. 
All right, so given that, what's the equation for the line in slope-intercept form? They want, in this case, if they want slope-intercept form, they want y equals mx plus b. So that means that, in this case, the slope is 5 thirds times x, and the y-intercept, oops, I put, wrote, I meant to write b there, uh, and then it's minus 6. So there's our slope-intercept form of this equation of this graph. All right, the next set of problems is a little bit uh, uh, along the same lines of we're creating equations either from graphs or from descriptions of a line. Here's another question where we're going to be uh, given the equation and answer the following questions. So here, we have standard form. What the x-intercept is, if I did x-intercept, what is x equal when y is 0? So this negative 6 times what gives me negative 12? If I divide negative 6 on both sides, I'll see the x-intercept is 2. So x equals 2 is the x-intercept. Uh, y-intercept, same deal. If I just cover up my x and just say 3y equals negative 12, I will see that y equals negative 4. All right, so the equation in slope-intercept form. Well, let's graph this first. Actually, it's a little easier if I graph it first, because then I can see that what the equation is. I also could solve this for y. I'll do both. Let's do both. So I'll graph it. Negative, so x is 2, y is negative 4. All right. So the slope for this line is 4 over 2. So it's uh, so it's it's 2 uh, for the slope, and the y-intercept is negative 4. So graph that line, and then I can see that the equation I should get is y equals 2x minus 4. Now, alternatively, I also could have just solved this equation for y and done the same thing. To solve this equation for y, I'm going to, uh, let's rewrite it first, 3y equals negative 12. That's going to be 3y equals 6x minus 12, because if you add 6x to both sides, you'll get that. And then we like to write our x term first, and then divide by 3. 3 divided by 3, y divided by 3 is y. 6x divided by 3 is 2x, and negative 12 divided by 3 is 4. So we see we get the same equation either way. OK, so for this particular uh, line, we're going, to, uh, we're going to be writing equations, or this slide, excuse me. We're going to be writing equations, and this is the last slide in the video, uh, that give us descriptions of lines. And when we want to do this, obviously, there's different forms that we can use, unless it specifies what form we want to use. There's going to be instances where standard form is easier, point slope form, or slope intercept form are our best options. All right, so when we have a question like this, equation of a line, they give us a slope, and they give us a point that's on the line. Uh, the best strategy here is to uh, first determine whether what kind of point you're looking at. So in this case, if we recognize that 0, 5, that's a y-intercept because the x value is 0. So we actually are given the y-intercept here. And when you have the y-intercept and the slope, it is easiest for you, to use, for you to use y equals mx plus b. So y equals negative 3x plus 5 would be the, uh, the correct way to go about that here. Now, number 44 is in kind of contrast to that. We have a slope and then we have a point, but this point is not the x or y intercept. So let me show you the strategy you want to use here. Uh, if we have a point and we have the slope, we can and should use point slope form, unless, of course, like I said before, unless you can determine it's the y intercept. So in this case, y minus 10 would equal 2 thirds slope times x plus 6. Okay. So that actually would work. And since it doesn't say you have to write a specific form, you actually could just leave it just like this. Now, number 45, write an equation of a line that is parallel to the line y equals 4x plus 1 and goes to the point 8, 2. Well, if it's parallel, the slopes are identical. So we would want to use a slope of 4. And then again, here's our point. So let's just use point slope form again. y minus 2 equals 4 times x minus 8. And that would be our point slope form for that. Write an equation of a line that's perpendicular to this line, negative 4, 1 fourth x minus 6, and goes to the point negative 4, 1. So again, this time we have perpendicularness. Well, the perpendicular line would be the negative reciprocal or additive and multiplicative inverses, whichever vocab word you prefer to use. Uh, basically, if you take the slope, negative 1 fourth, flip it, so it'd be 4, and then switch the sign. So it'd be positive 4 for the slope. So in this case, the equation that we want to use here is with a slope of 4. Our uh, point is given here, so let's write in point slope form. y minus 1 equals 4 times x plus 4. And notice when I use point slope form, the numbers I plug into the equation are technically opposite of the signs of the point. Now, with number 47, here we have an uh, equation of a line that goes to the points 2, negative 4, and 10, 14. So in this instance, actually, we want to find the slope first. And the slope here would be the difference in the y-coordinates divided by the difference in the x-coordinates. So if I, my y-coordinates are 14 and negative 4, so it's 14 minus negative 4. I'll put negative 4 in parentheses. 
divided by 10 minus 2. So in this case, it's going to equal 18 divided by 8. So 18 divided by 8, that's going to be 2.25. Okay. So our slope is 2.25 based on this. And just double checking, making sure that that works. Yeah, that does. Okay. So with a slope of 2.25, then what we want to do is we can, in this instance, just go right to point slope form. Because once I find the slope, I have two points to choose from. I also have an argument that I can write slope intercept form, find the b value. There's a couple of things you can do. I find it's easiest just to use the point slope form. So y minus, uh, let's y, y minus 14 equals uh, 2.25, or 9 fourths if you want to write it as a fraction times x, uh, I use 14, so minus 10 would be our equation. So that would work for that. Okay. So that concludes this particular part of the video. Uh, we're next, the next unit, we're, the next video, we're going to talk about statistics and um, exponential functions along with some systems of equations. So we'll cover all that in the next video. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.